Hello! In this video, I'll provide a high-level overview of ways to integrate with Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. I'm David Wong from Intel's Business Client Platforms Group. If you're thinking about how to build software that ties into the endpoint management features offered by Intel Emma, stay tuned. First, let me give a quick overview of Intel Endpoint Management Assistant. Intel Emma is server software available for free on intel.com, which can be hosted in the cloud or on-premise. It provides remote endpoint management capabilities, including management through Intel Active Management Technology, and starting with 12th trend Intel vPro platforms, Intel standard manageability as well. Using Intel Emma, connected endpoints can be managed whether they are on a local network or connected to the internet outside the firewall. You can see Intel Emma's web-based interface here. Inband software-based management is facilitated through the included software agent, which is available for Windows endpoints. That agent also facilitates configuration of endpoints with Intel AMT or Intel Standard Manageability, and that enables those endpoints to keep in contact with the Intel Emma server so that they can be managed even when the operating system is not running. This makes possible some additional use cases, such as remotely powering on endpoints for patching or remotely troubleshooting issues under the operating system, including in BIOS. Now, let's talk about integration. At the highest level, there are a couple of approaches to integrating with Intel Emma. One is by using its REST or JavaScript APIs. The other approach, since of course Emma presents its own web interface, is by providing simple web-based links to manage devices in Intel Emma. I'll illustrate now with a couple examples. First, to show an API-driven example, I'll open up the Intel Emma ServiceNow integration, which is available to ServiceNow customers through the ServiceNow store. As you can see, as a service desk user, I can open an incident ticket associated with a PC managed by Emma. Then, with the integration installed, I can click this button, and I can stay inside this interface, which is hosted inside ServiceNow. The application does have to handle authentication to Intel Emma APIs, this can be user authentication as seen here, or, where appropriate, server-to-server -server authentication using client credentials. But then, this application uses those APIs to provide built-in actions, such as in-band KVM using the JavaScript API, or force resetting the PC using Intel AMT. Now, let me show you a link-based integration example. Here's this simple mockup of a device management platform, which, as they so often do, includes an interface with a grid of managed devices and their hardware or software attributes. Often, these platforms have an agent that can gather these attributes in a configurable way, in which case, they can generate a link directly to manage an endpoint in Intel Emma. So if we imagine that situation here, this device management platform was able to generate this link to Intel Emma. Then I, as an IT admin looking to take advantage of Emma's features, can click that link and log in to use Emma's web interface to take advantage of all of Emma's features, including out-of-band KVM, which is not yet available through Intel Emma's APIs. So that illustrates at a high level the API versus the link-based integration approaches. In terms of specific considerations, API-based integrations can provide a more integrated user experience at the expense of potentially more development and maintenance effort over time. Many Intel Emma features are available through either REST or JavaScript APIs, including in or out-of-band power actions, remote platform arrays, and numerous in-band features through the agent like remote desktop or file and process management. At the same time, not every Intel Emma capability is currently embeddable through APIs. For example, APIs enabling integration of out-of-band remote desktop through Intel AMT is a future feature in Emma's product backlog. 
Meanwhile, the link-based approach of course does provide access to all EMMA capabilities, both now and as future features get added. It's likely less effort to integrate at the expense of a less streamlined experience, and it does require some mechanism in the integrating application, whether a configurable agent or some kind of manual process to generate those device-specific links to Intel Emma. Finally, it's important to note, given this set of pros and cons, these two approaches aren't mutually exclusive. You can do both. If we head back to the ServiceNow integration, you can see there's a button to link out to out-of-band KVM which links to that computer's endpoint management page in the Intel Emma web interface, where out of band KVM is available. So, as you can see, it's possible to enable users with both approaches, putting certain API-driven features close at hand, while also providing a link to Emma for the additional features or for some measure of future-proofing. With that, I'll wind down here with a few resources. If you're looking to implement the link-based approach, you may want to hit the pause button on this slide, which contains details on how to generate those links for each device managed by Intel Emma. And then, if you're looking to work with the APIs, you'll find resources, including Swagger online REST API documentation on any installed Intel Emma instance, as well as more resources in the Intel Emma install package, including paper documentation for the JavaScript APIs, and sample code for both the REST and JavaScript APIs. And with that, thank you for watching. 